Hello and welcome back to The Learning Curve, the series where we all get to learn from my mistakes. Today I'll be finishing off the detailing on the Leopard 1 that we started painting last episode. Make sure you stay tuned, you wouldn't want to miss it. I start off the detailing by painting all the metal bits of the tools in a gray color. It's easier to paint these tools before you glue them to the tank, but I built this kit like five years ago and it's too late for that now. Make sure that you don't miss all these small little details, like these chains. For the first layer of the wood, I'll be using a light tan color and making sure that I get even coverage over the whole handle. The second layer will be a slightly darker brown, mixed to be just a little bit thinner. The coverage here is a little more spotty than the previous layer. I go back over the dark brown with a different tan color, this time even less uniform than the previous layer. And then I take a mid-tone and apply another sort of splotchy layer. I do this back and forth with tan and brown until I achieve the desired effect. The exact colors don't matter, just go back and forth from light to dark. For the final wood tone, I use a yellowish tan color applied very thinly over the whole handle. It looks pretty good here, but subscriber Carl Thompson suggested a new technique on a previous video that I'm going to test out. He said to use Vallejo smoke and brush it on in only one direction to simulate wood grain. I mixed my own smoke color using gray, black, and matte clear. I then dragged a micro applicator across the wet paint to create the grain. I think it turned out great. Thanks for the tip, Carl. If you have any tips or tricks I should try in a future episode, be sure to leave a comment below. You can see on the blade of this shovel that I painted some chips in a light gray. I then filled the centers in with a darker tone. I like to finish some of these shovels with red handles. I think the pop of color against the camo is a cool contrast. For the loader's machine gun, I kept it simple and painted it in a matte black. Then I painted the grip and the stock of the machine gun in a dark brown. I didn't try anything too fancy here. For the headlights, I start with a coat of gloss black. There was one piece of advice I got a couple of times to paint the headlights silver. I give it a little bit of enamel wash so it doesn't look so shiny, and then I use UV resin to create the glass for the headlight. This stuff is awesome when you get a kit that doesn't have clear sprues. I used the same gloss black and metallic silver for these periscopes. They were kind of finicky to paint, and because they were square, I couldn't really drill them out, but I think they turned out okay. The taillights get the same black and silver treatment, and then I mix up a transparent red using matte clear and to me a gloss red. It saves me a couple bucks mixing my own transparent colors up instead of buying a bottle that I'll never finish. Thanks for the tip everyone, the silver and transparent looks good. In preparation for the next steps, I apply a gloss coat. Here I'm just using an acrylic floor finish. It's really thin so I spray it at less than 10 psi. The gloss coat helps prevent decals from silvering and lets the enamel washes that I'll apply next flow into the crevices easier. When I painted this model, I used an enamel filter, so I need to seal it in with an acrylic coat to protect it from the next layer of enamels. Enamel washes and filters are very easily reactivated, so this clear coat is crucial. I make sure to get full coverage over the entire model, and I spray it on pretty heavily for the first coat. Then I'll follow it up with two or three lighter coats, just to make sure everything's sealed. Once everything's been sprayed down, I cover it with a box to keep dust from settling on the wet gloss coat while it dries. The decals included with this kit are for a Bundeswehr Leopard, but this camo pattern I've decided on is based on the Norwegian Army. That's okay, we'll make it work. I cut out the decals I want with a hobby knife, and then I soak them in a 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and water. Once they're ready to go, I brush some microset onto the model where the decal will be applied. I haven't noticed that it makes a huge difference, but I have it, so I'll use it. If you don't already own it, don't buy it. Just use the water vinegar mixture that you soaked your decals in. Once the decal is in place, I dry it off and apply Microsol on top. Microsol is a solvent that softens the decal and allows it to adhere to curved and uneven surfaces better. It helps out with decal silvering a lot, but be careful. It makes the decals very fragile. You can see that I messed one of them up a little bit because I was messing around with it too much after applying the Microsol. Once everything's set, I give it 20 or 30 minutes to dry and then seal it in with the same clear coat as before. 
The clear coat is another step that really helps these decals look less like decals and more like part of the vehicle. Aside from this little bit of jankiness, I think these are pretty good. For the final step of the wood, I applied the darkest brown wash I had. I let it pool in some areas, but made sure there weren't any huge black stains. In real life, wood has lots of variation. It's got grain that absorbs oils, and it has lots of depth. This final wash over everything helps to increase the realism just that little bit more. I love trying out new techniques for wooden details, because there's so many ways to get good results, and it's a small thing that I feel like I have a lot of room to improve on. For the armor surfaces, I use three different washes. A light brown, a mid-tone, and then that same dark brown that I used for the wood. I'm mostly using the darker two colors on the green and white areas, and the lighter one on the black areas. This creates variety in the dirt and grime on the surface of the vehicle, and also ensures that it's visible on the different colored camo splotches. These thin enamel washes flow very nicely into cracks and corners. This helps to highlight and pick out small surface details that would otherwise be overlooked. And it also helps to visually separate areas of the vehicle. I make sure to apply the washes into areas that would accumulate grime and dirt, and then, using white spirits, I remove the excess. These enamel washes are super easy to use and aren't very expensive. I've tried to make my own oil washes, but they were nowhere near as user-friendly. Make sure to remove the enamels from everywhere that you don't want it. The next step will be sealing it in with a clear coat. Now that we're done using the gloss coat's smooth surface, it's time to tone it back. Before I apply the matte coat, I mask off all the things that I want to keep glossy. This is my first time trying liquid masking, and it worked pretty well. I applied it to the headlights and brake lights, and then waited about half an hour until it was completely dry to the touch. For the periscopes and the taillights, I just used regular Tamiya masking tape. Just like with the gloss coat, I make sure to get nice, even coverage over everything to dull down that shine. Once the matte coat dries, we can start adding the finishing touches. On the tow cables and tools, I'm using a very soft 12B artist pencil to create a very subtle metallic effect. This was another recommendation of Carl Thompson's, so thanks. I use this trick on these small chain details, armor corners, weld beads, and the tools. Really just anywhere that could have a little bit of metal showing. It's super subtle, but it's also tiny details like this that add up to create a great model. Because this kit doesn't come with anything for these periscopes, I'm using more UV resin to create the glass. And don't forget to remove the liquid mask. The exhaust grills get a lot of carbon buildup. To simulate that, I mix pigment powder and rubbing alcohol into a paste. Pigment fixer and alcohol both dry to a matte sheen, but alcohol dries in a few seconds and pigment fixer takes a couple minutes. The pigment fixer also seems to be a lot thicker. I splotch it all over the exhaust with a micro applicator, and then I use a Q-tip with more rubbing alcohol to take the excess off. The antennas included in this kit are really thick, and they don't really look scale. To fix that, I cut a piece of copper wire to the same length, and open it up to remove individual strands. Be careful that you don't cut yourself when you're doing this. You can see that I kind of bent these wires, which can be fixed, but try to keep them as straight as possible. Then, it's as simple as painting them matte black and super gluing them into place. It's a lot easier to touch up the paint and straighten them out once they're glued down. Then I use a charcoal stick to add carbon deposits to the muzzle. Once that's done, we're ready for the final reveal. I'm really happy with these details. I especially love the tools right here. I learned a lot of cool new techniques, and I hope you did too. If you have any tips, tricks, or techniques that I can try, let me know in the comments below, and maybe you'll get a spot in next week's episode. If you want to see part one of this video, or any of my other videos, check out my channel. Thanks again for tuning in.